My birth name is Hannah. I was born in the UK. Um, both of my parents are Jamaican. And I also lived in the US for 16 years. And you can... I'm Halima. I was also born in the UK. I'm her daughter. <laughs> but her father is Ghanaian. Oh, okay. Yeah. So what, what was the Ghanaian? Her Ghanaian name? Uh, Adra Buafa. Mm. <laughs> hmm. I'm also an Adra. Oh, really? Yeah. Um, and I, I would be Mahama, I guess. Mahama. Yeah, that's my husband. Okay. That's my, yeah. Interesting. Yeah. So, um, I your husband was the ex president. The ex president. <laughs> <laughs> well, he's my uncle. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So the the funny thing about it, um, why Ghana, it wasn't because of um, the connection her father has, because yeah, when I was with her father, I had no idea that I'd ever be here. Um, I was in America and I was, I just had a feeling that it was time for me to leave. There wasn't anything in particular that was happening. It's just, I guess, sometimes we're led from within. So I went to Jamaica because both of my parents were had migrated back to Jamaica. So I was thinking that's where I can settle and, you know, um, live in a natural environment. But after going there, in fact, I went there with um, my daughter, the first visit, and... Um, you know, the experience there, it just, to me, it was quite violent and quite um, the stories that I was hearing and it was a negative energy for me. And then um, on top of that, the, the culture that I was raised in, like in, in the UK, it's not like in Ghana and in Jamaica where young children take care of their parents and their grandparents and all of this, it's like... Kids take care of their in Jamaica? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. How is it's that? like, well, um, you know, in the UK and in the US, they have this thing of child labor and, you know, children have more rights sometimes than the parent themselves. So when I was young, my mother used to, because I wasn't raised by my mother, but she used to ask us for things that would be considered an adult providing. Because she was in Jamaica when they had the hurricane and things like that. She would write to us to send her a mattress. And I was 12 years old, so I didn't even understand that concept. Like, how am I going to work and have money to send? But after going there, I realized that the culture is very much like here, where the children from a young age, they go out and they hustle. They help the family, they farm, they do all of these things. So it kind of made sense to me, but it took a long time for me to even understand that concept. Um, so from going there, um, I, I kind of had a, a knowledge of what I wanted to be doing and it wasn't going to be to be taking care of my uncles and all of this thing. So, 
that was another part of the thing that didn't settle. So um, that was in 2006. So I returned back to the US and there was a group of people coming to Ghana and it was just so happened to be Ghana. It could have been anywhere in Africa yeah. and I would have wanted to be a part. And I, I, uh, had you heard anything about Ghana? Just really, um, her grandmother used to teach me basic words and everything like that. Um, but no, I didn't really know anything about Ghana, to be honest. Um, I just remember when I first landed the heat and <laughs> the black faces, it just felt like home. <laughs> yeah, That's yeah. So, <laughs> so I didn't kiss the ground or anything, but I, I wanted to really. I, I felt home straight away. Um, and I was on a tour at that time. It was 2000, August 2008. And all I kept on saying was, it's just like Jamaica. So from there, when we got back to the US, it's like there was a group that had been coming out for three years and they were talking about relocating and everything like that. So I wanted to be on board. So um, in January 2009, we came to Accra and Accra... No, no. <laughs> but before I want to kind of let her chip in because I know that when I was leaving America she felt that I was a nut like you know just to be moving yeah. it was um, very like my mum went on a I would say a trip then when she came back it seemed like within months she was like I'm out I'm, yeah like I'm, I'm going and for me it was like it's very random yeah so and for me, it's like uh, the group, the idea of the group, it was to, to give back to Ghana because a lot of people, they come and they have this idea that they're owed something like because of slavery and stuff like that. But the thing that kind of attracted me to the group, it was we were coming to give back to Ghana. Um, what? I found was that the cultural difference for most, uh, I'd say, people that have no connection of the islands or anything like that, it was a bit much for them. So most, there was 12 of us that came and out of the 12, there was two of us, me and another sister that is um, staying over there that was left. And the group idea um, when it dispersed, I still felt, because that's why I came, I wanted to not only create a place for other people coming from the West, to kind of have a bridge to, to Africa or to Ghana in this case, because it, yeah, because most people they go back because of silly reasons, like maybe the police, um, disturbing them, like asking for chop and stuff like that. In, in the West, what I know is that they do their extortion in front of your face. Like an example, if you turn the corner wrong, they'll send you a 65 pounds. Like I remember going to London, I couldn't believe mm. it's 65 pounds because they have cameras yeah, that capture you mm -hmm. and they send you a 65 pound bill in your door but people are used to that because it's a system mm -hmm. they come here and a police officer will ask them for one cd and they'll be like i'm never coming to ghana again so i realize that culturally there's a disconnect because if you go into a store there's prices on everything so if you come here and one person says one price for like, let's say bread, yeah. and another person says another price, people feel like they're being ripped off. Oh, it's because I'm from abroad and all of this stuff. Mm. And a lot of the time it's for petty money, like 50 paceways or something mm. silly. But the way the Western people have been raised is very um, precise. What you say has to be what it is. Mm. If you say you're coming to fix something, they want you to come at the time. They say between, let's say 12 and one, 
and they expect you to be there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So here, totally different system. So people are leaving and going, like saying they won't come back for silly reasons. So I was thinking that to have an environment like this is where it's, it's not to tell the people to change because we're in your country, mm. but it's to give an example of how things can be. For example, um, it's painful when you're in a car and someone is drinking pure water or any kind of food and then they just dash it mm. on the floor. And to some people, they'll be like, Ghana's filthy and all of this, but I can retrace in the UK, it used to be disgusting. And they did a in campaign. America, yeah, it, it's nasty. But they did a campaign, keep your country tidy. They went into the schools, they educated the children about it and everything like that. On top of that, what I noticed was here in Ghana, people used to eat their foods in leaves and where you can just throw it and it's biodegradable. So without considering how the country got to how it got to, people just come and instead of trying to solve the problem to their homeland, because that's what they, you know, everybody abroad is like, I want to come home and all of this. It's like, as soon as they see a problem, they want to go because in the West they fix everything or it appears that way. But what in noticing how things happen, it's like to me, the West creates a problem and then they come in as the heroes. Like, let's say they bring in the politics, they bring in the things that Ghana is not used to yeah. it, not being able to go into the ground and disappear. And then they'll come with uh, companies, recycling companies, and everybody will clap for them, but they created the problem. So um, for me, it was clear to see that, clear to see the bridge that this is why we're in the situation that we're in. And it's like, if you don't come here as a problem solver, you're just adding to the problem. You know, um, we've had groups from the US come out um, and they'll complain about not having air conditioning and things like that. But then on the same hand, they'll say how their ancestors suffered and all of this stuff It's like, but you're pampered. You know, that wasn't your suffering and now it's time for us to do our part. Right. It's like you complain about small things. It's like the, the way the people in Ghana are suffering, I can never say that, I, I can never look down on anybody because if we are a lot of the people from the US or from the UK or wherever, if they had been put in conditions mm. like, like what Ghanaians are, I couldn't even imagine how they'd be behaving. So, you know, it's easy to judge people from lack of experience. But if we're really coming here to solve or to really build our country and to build Africa and to be these royal people that we know, it's like, we have to think of the solutions to some of the problems. Um, Do you think um, blacks across the world, um, we are kind of fighting against ourselves, yeah. even when we are on the continent? Definitely. Because it seems like, okay, well, the white man is suppressing me, I'm not having my freedom, mm -hmm. I want to come back to the motherland. Yeah. You come to the motherland and you want to look down on the people. Good. And it's all crazy and you go back <sighs> Yeah. So yesterday I was I was watching this video on, on um, Facebook. This mm -hmm. lady, I think she took an Uber, and the guy was Nigerian. Uh -huh. yeah, I think he's based in Switzerland, and he's he's in America now. Yeah. Okay. So I think he's not too he's not a fan of Donald Trump. Oh, okay. <laughs> Unfortunately, this black yeah. lady was a fan of Donald oh, okay. Trump, and you know he said something oh that fucking president. Uh huh. And she went off. Wow. wow. And all the stuff she said, Nigeria this, Nigeria that. I'm like, okay, how are we gonna fix ever fix this problem? Yeah. Because if you are you are saying Nigeria is trash, you are basically saying you are yeah. trash. Yeah. Because the white man doesn't know you were you were you were black. Uh, all they know is you are black. Yeah. They don't see you as any other. Right, different races yes. or they, yeah. They don't You're just black, that. your all, face all they see yeah. is black. Yeah. So, if you want to say, no, I'm black, they are Africans. <laughs> On that subject, 
What I know is that everything is like uh, indoctrination, like from school, from the different institutions that you go in, they teach you that their fight is your fight. Like for example, if um, let's say skin cancer is a problem for the certain skin types, they'll make it a general problem. Um, even, you know, I don't want to go into too much politics, but the fight is their fight and they make it our fight when there's white faces involved because there's even the thing going on in Ukraine, for example. Um, I've never seen them so passionate to involve all of these other countries like it's our fight. Look at how these people are suffering. And there's so many African countries that have said that when it was us, it's like, is it that um, we're not important? Because you didn't come to our aid like that. And so I don't think it's a wrong thing because if we are in their environment, then it's like either you should be learning, you, like you can never be an equal. It's like, um, so it's like in seeing how things are, you just have to have sense to know that they are for their own races, um, welfare. And a lot of the time, unfortunately, because we've been programmed in a way, you have like some people with color that will even kill someone else um, for the sake of protecting the the other race or whatever so it i think everyone has their purpose and the the whole thing i don't knock anyone because whatever your upbringing or whatever your mentality it's from it's not like you could look at someone and know how they got to the point that they are because like even coming here and seeing people bleaching their skin is so hurtful because it, if only they knew what they're doing to not just them, but they're doing to their generations because Christianity, I mean, it kind of goes deep, but like, let's say Christianity for a long time, they've put an image of God for us to idolize and everything. And that has had an effect on our children. So now you, the parent, also whitening your skin and not appreciating your ancestors and everything about black is wrong is you're teaching it to the children so when you see people fighting and everything for against their own it's because of the self-hate and i think that you know each person can only do what they can do because um, yeah i was at the photo uh, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So I took a tour around the place, and there were statues, you know, they called the yeah. stations of the cross. Yeah. Okay. Everybody in the, okay, all the statues were like, you know, white. Yeah. And when it came to the nailing of Christ, the soldiers were black. I was like, uh, <laughs> what's going on here? <laughs> yeah. 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 The statues, everybody else had, you know, yeah. <laughs> Light skin, blue eyes. Yeah. When it came to the kneeling of uh, of Christ, it, it was black. Yeah. And the the commander or, or the Roman whoever was also black. Like yeah. every, all the his yeah. were black. Yeah. So I pointed out to the guy, why is it that this is so? Mm. And apparently they, they were telling me that um, when visitors come, they take sticks and they hit the Roman soldier for for, for you know. Yeah, what they've done to or their crimes. For trying to kill Christ. Yeah. For that reason, they, wow. most most of those yeah. statues they are wouldn't damaged. feel they wouldn't feel comfortable <laughs> wow. beating the white. <laughs> no. It's like let's make them black. No, so I actually asked the priest there. Uh, yeah. Why is that so? Yeah. You know, he went. Rah, rah, rah. Yeah. You know, it's funny. There's a. a, a